Emergency medical physician and ABC News contributor Dr. Darian Sutton, we just saw in Eva's piece. So, uh, Dr. Sutton, the World Health Organization has declared this uh, uh, an international global health emergency. What does that mean? How significant is it? Well, good afternoon, Terry. So this definition constitutes that there is an extraordinary event that may constitute public health risks to other countries uh, and require a global and international coordinated response. So this is really just a message to the world that this is a problem that everyone needs to get a hold of to figure out how to prevent, as well as make sure that we understand how transmission is occurring. And then, of course, vaccinating those who are high risk. And Dr. Sutton, so far the cases have been primarily concentrated in, in the gay community. And uh, the question is, how, how concerned should parents be about kids sharing towels at, uh, at summer camps, for example, or stuff like that? Uh, or is uh, the incidence among, in the gay community a harbinger of a wider spread? What's your read on that? Well, I want to reaffirm that whenever we see a new pathogen or a new outbreak of a pathogen that we know well, for example, from monkeypox, it always happens through circumstance and social networks. So initially, we saw outbreaks in Europe that was associated to a party that consisted of many gay and bisexual men, and inadvertently, that spread to other countries. Now, uh, I want to be clear in defining this uh, as a possible pathogen that can infect and transmit between all of us, regardless of your sexual orientation. I think it's just through circumstance that we're seeing a high population of gay and bisexual men. And as far as parents who are concerned and want to make sure that their children are safe, I want to remind them that incidence of cases in children is still rare, and the requirement of transmission often involves close skin-to-skin -skin contact. So in order to help prevent this, it's important to understand what it looks like. It doesn't have the classical presentation that we saw in textbooks, for example, that many photos were shared at the beginning. Oftentimes, it can be mild pimples or pustule-like lesions associated with the flu-like illness or lymph node swelling. Uh, and then important to understand that that is a a common symptom so that before you engage in social events, just check yourself, check your family, and be aware. Again, transmission requires infection, and so our goal is to prevent that. And I just want to underline, Dr. Sutton, that this is not a respiratory disease, right? We've been living for years now with, uh, with COVID, which is uh, uh, transmitted primarily through, uh, through the air. This is something different. You said it's skin-to-skin it's -skin contact, a, a lot of it. Have we got a sense of that? Yeah, so this virus normally transmits as it does, as its cousin, smallpox, via skin-to-skin -skin contact, although surface contact is also possible. And so what happens is, is that this virus transmits from an open lesion or a sore from one infected person to another person who is not infected. And if that person is not immune protected, there are increased risks of developing symptoms. Now, that is the most common way that monkeypox and smallpox transmits, as opposed to, as you discussed, for example, COVID-19, which is a primarily respiratory illness. Uh, this is just opening the world up to education about pathogens that exist. Many viruses exist and they transmit in many different ways. So that's why conversations like this are so valuable and important for people to understand what is their risk and how they can best prevent it. And uh, doctor, who should be getting vaccinated right now? Should people who are not high risk be concerned and considering uh, a monkeypox vaccination? So I think right now, given the rates that we've seen, we've been primarily focusing on ring vaccination, which is basically vaccinating those who have been exposed to a known case of monkeypox, and then also those who are higher risk. Now, predominantly, the patients that are being tested positive for COVID, excuse me, for monkeypox, are gay and bisexual men. So the primary, uh, the, the primary focus of vaccination focuses on this group. We may see changes in the future, but I do think that it will likely be limited to those simply who are higher risk, which again includes those who have been known exposed or those who might have a high risk history uh, and lead to exposure. Um, but th the problem is, is that the demand is outstripping the supply. And so I'm hopeful that we'll start to see as approved these 700,000 plus vaccines that have been approved and shipped, that we will start to see them dispense because we have many patients that are looking to be protected. And a, a lot of people who had never heard of monkeypox until recently. So for anybody who is concerned they may have contracted it, how would they know? What did they look for? So the most common symptoms of monkeypox include that rash that we've seen a couple of photos of. It can be very isolated to the body, including things of pimples and blister-like form formations that can progress. And often they come with flu-like illness and swollen lymph nodes. If you feel like you've had new development of a rash, especially if you have symptoms in places where you don't normally get pimples or blisters, for example, your hands or your face or your mouth, these are concerning signs for the possibility of monkeypox. You should isolate and contact your local, local Department of Health 
for testing. And there is treatment available for monkeypox. It's commonly known as T-pox, but it's really just reserved for those who are higher risk because fortunately we have not seen severe outcomes in these cases of monkeypox, although it is increasing in transmission. Hmm. Dr. Darian Sutton, we're keeping you busy uh, recently. Thanks very much, as always. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.